Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 4, Episode 1. You can find this on Prime Video and also randomly on YouTube. And it has a different format than Portrait Artist of the Year, so we'll talk about that throughout. This is an exciting episode. Let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe. And we're going to see one of our first differences in the two programs right away. Starting here, we don't see the artists don't hold their paintings next to them, which makes it harder to identify the artists throughout the program. But here is contestant number one. And so in order to be on this program, you have to submit a landscape. And of course, this would be a cityscape. Uh, what else is going to say? Um, well, so we're, so like I said, oh, this is a, this is actually done with sewing. Those are threads and we'll get there. You can get a closer up view of that. And she brings her sewing machine and God bless her. You know, she's not going to have time to really complete something during this program, but that's the way it is there. You can see it really well. Wow. That's, that's really amazing. The different forms she can get, you know, um, and, and spaces for the birds to fly through the leaves. This fellow does monochromatic work and he does it in a format that is very similar to printmaking. So he, I think he uses a photograph and then he cuts out different stencils. It's quite a laborious process. And I believe he said that this piece took him about three months. I really miss color in this, but that's me. Here is another cityscape. Now, this is very clever because you, you, when you have a landscape, there's such a tendency to just think horizontally because that's how we see. So having that bridge diagonally cutting across is so super important in order for us to see space. And then that's balanced with that triangle dock or rooftop or whatever it is in the foreground. You, you kind of have to reinvent, or this is what I find in my own landscapes, you have to reinvent you have the horizontal to work from, and then you got to figure out your diagonals because that's what brings you into the painting. This, I think, is a, a gouache piece and was quite small. I'm intrigued by gouache. It's sort of halfway between watercolor and acrylic. It is diluted with water and dries fairly quickly, so you're not going to get the kind of blending that you do in watercolor. But I, 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 I'm curious about that medium. Now, this is somebody that I know. I don't know that she knows me, but in the past we've corresponded. This is Haiti Jo Summers. I have adored her painting since she first came across my path, probably back in 2011, I would say. And just a side story, I had one of her little paintings up on my screen and somebody was behind me and said, oh, she's not very good. And I said, oh my gosh, are you wrong? You have no idea. And she's one of the most successful painters that I know of from that time who has really blossomed and had a successful career. Here is a very unusual way to look at landscape. I don't begin to understand it. I don't understand, but it's abstract. And she uses the same color palette today. It's a, it's kind of an interesting color palette. I'm not, it's not my taste um, in many ways. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. And this is someone who's working in pen and ink and applying some color as well. So uh, uh, once again, a very, very, very field. Now where they are today is they are at a place called Fountains Abbey. And I'm gonna show you some pictures of Fountains Abbey. Now, first of all, the place is enormous. I mean, just gigantic. And they start the day, when they start the day, it's sunny out. But as the day progresses, it gets gray. So here we see it probably from about where their vantage point would have been with the sun sh casting shadows and bringing some warm light to the stones. But as the day progresses, that's going to disappear. And, and that, that, that is going to, you know, as you know, as a landscape painter, that's going to cause some problems. Also, the fact that you, any, oh, here, just more pictures of, of the Abbey, so you can get an idea of just how enormous this place is. Um, so again, the light is shining on, and, and that gives you some warm temperature colors to work from. But the minute that sun is gone, those aren't going to be there. 
and that's when things get really dicey. And also shadows are going to change over the course of five hours that they're they're painting only two hours and then a break and then two more hours, but the sun is going to move in that time and that is going to change things. So you better commit to a strategy and a process and then lock yourself in because you, you, you just, if you change later, you're going to, you're going to run into some problems. So there, once again, if in the very far, far distance, you can see the pods lined up that are looking at the Abbey. Here are the pods from the other direction. Each person has their own little pod. They're kind of adorable-ish, you know, with some cover over them, but they really are open to the elements. So if it's hot, if it's cold, if it's rainy, if it's breezy, you know, that, that causes some um, complications. Now the judging begins. This is four hours that they've been painting overall, but there has been a break. They haven't been under hot television lights and haven't had a crowd around them, which is what happens in Portrait Artist of the Year. So maybe it's a more friendly environment. I'm not sure because you've got to get to the venue. Oh boy, and bring all your stuff. All right, here are all the paintings lined up that were done today, just so you can get an idea of the field and how varied the different sizes are and the paintings themselves. We're going to look at each one individually. And look at how much the light has changed. You see behind how the sky has gotten gray, whereas in the morning it was blue. All right, here's the fellow who does those almost like a silk screen kind of things. Uh, again, I just don't know how to judge a completely monochromatic painting. Coming in closer, you can see where he cuts with an X-Acto knife and creates stencils. So it looks to me like he would have had about four or five different stencils laid on each other, and then that creates the image. It's, I, I have to admire his commitment to the process. I, I don't understand why he stays monochromatic in terms of only one color. Uh, uh, that's just baffling to me. And so I'm not really sure how to respond to this. It's very, very accurate, but, but I also think it's accurate because of the use of technology which is fine. You're allowed to use it. All right, here's that more abstract kind of painter. I, I, I don't know how this would take you even four hours. I mean, come on. I, oh, geez, now I'm being mean. I don't mean to be mean. This, maybe someone in the comments can help me out with this because I just don't know how to judge this. I, I have to like, I, I like the simplicity. Um, I like that it's almost... Um, See, I can't even talk about it because it's, I don't understand the language of what's going on here. All right, now we're back in the land that I live in. <laughs> this is, this, this is the kind of painting that I really respond to. I, clearly, they took this uh, paint, you know, the image head on and they did not simplify. Well, they did simplify, but they really included everything. Look at that. That is so much space to cover. And with accuracy, that's someone who's been practicing landscape for a very, very long time. It's really nice. Really, really nice. It it does... He, that's interesting. I'm just trying to look a little bit closer. I'm not, not seeing diagonals happening there. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, yeah, it doesn't need diagonals, but it's a very horizontal painting. I, I love this painting. I, I just think it's fabulous. And obviously it had some warm, he toned the canvas with some kind of warm orange and then laid his grays on top of it. And those are mixed grays. That's not coming from a tube. All right, here's the person who is more of a, a pen and ink painter uh, or artist. And, you know, this could have been anywhere. It doesn't have to be Fountain's Abbey. This could be any corner of an old building of some kind. So for me, it's not identifiable at all. Does that matter to the judges? I have no idea. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, <laughs> see, this is what happens. Okay, now we're back in the land I live in. <laughs> it's land where people hold brushes in their hands and a palette. This fellow really struggled because he, it's the day started with a very, like I said, really sunny. So he captured the sun, and then as the day went on, of course, things got bleaker and darker. And so it, I think it's a really good reflection of what happened atmospherically on that day. 
And I really, really love how he has forms going off in the distance behind that are less defined than the closer ones. There's something a little bit ghostly about it in a way, kind of atmospheric and spiritual or something. That's, I think it's kind of cool. And looking up close, you can see how he, what he lays in for those little blocks of color, or larger blocks of color when it comes to the, the clouds or, or, or space overall. Yeah, look at that. That reads really fantastic from far away. And the highlight of that tower, because the sun was on it. it it's a real hybrid of what he saw all day. And I, I, that's just experience, I think. And really a lot that he picked up there, you, you can only pick up from the naked eye. Now here's our person who's gonna sew today. And so, of course, she's at a tremendous disadvantage. I don't know. Oh, poor baby, she had to bring that Singer sewing machine with her. It's not a Singer, it's some kind of <laughs> you know, European brand of sewing machine. But I did several images of this because I, I just find it fascinating that this is what she does. You know, um, thinking about sewing as a medium for expression and fine art is an in interesting concept. How you judge it against the other paintings, that is for these judges to do. Now there's a more close-up view of it, and you can see this, the stitching involved. I, I don't think she had the kind of time that she needed today, and I, you know, that's, that's pretty obvious. And, it, you know, it would have been interesting if she could have laid in the foundation and then worked more of her process that we could see on the program, but, but that's not how the program works. So what did, but of course she'll be judged on what she did today, not on what she didn't do. So by omission, I think you have to say hats off, holy smokes. That's really an amazing thing. But how you judge it against paintings, that's something that is, is just not knowable by me. I think I'm gonna need to look her up and, and see what she's up to today and see a little bit more of what her process is. It's interesting, hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know if enough about sewing or, or how she does what she does. Now, this is the person that, that um, I've had communication with, Haiti Jo. She turned, instead of looking directly at the Abbey, she turned slightly to the left and got involved in the different formations that are adjacent to the Abbey. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of her paintings. I'm a fan of all of her paintings. If you, if you look her up, you will see she's, she's, pretty much a daily painter. She paints a lot. And I love her interiors as well as her landscapes. She also does portrait work as well. She's really gung-ho. And uh, I, I think she, her paintings are very fresh. I think they're exciting. They're, look at that. See, now, uh, yeah, I might be biased because I feel like I know this person, but but I I don't have a bias in terms of that I, I really like this painting the best. <laughs> I know it doesn't tackle the whole Abbey, and they probably are gonna have problems with that. But I think that's our job as a landscape painter when we go out there, is it, uh, some of my favorite paintings. I live in Vermont, which is a pretty rural place here in the United States, and and We've all seen a red barn, but what's exciting is to go out and, and see that red barn in a different way. Now here's somebody who, I really love how graphic this is. And you can see from the reference, when we remember the Abbey, how they grabbed this from the image. I, I love when an image like this will go off the paper because I, I think it, it's, it's much more exciting visually than if you were to add put the whole thing on a piece of paper. Again, island surrounded by oceans, right? You don't want to have an island, which is your major form surrounded by an ocean of space, which might have happened on a couple of the previous paintings. We'll, we'll be able to look at them some more. Those grays are, are really, really beautiful grays. Wow, look at that. And the warm blue stone is, is carefully mixed. Yeah, I really like that. And I think having the, the tower go off the top of the paper, I definitely would have done that. That's kind of something that you see uh, here when people uh, paint, say, churches, for example. It, it, you just compositionally kind of have to fit that tall thing in somehow, and oftentimes it, it looks better if it runs off the page. 
Oh, all right, now the semi-final judging. We're gonna have three people. Oh, actually, this is the final judging, isn't it? Yeah, wow, lined up just like they do in Portrait Artist of the Year. Three will be selected and then, that's right, three gets selected, but only one will go on. It looks so funny to see them out in the field after seeing them in the studio for so long. All right, Haiti Jo is one of them. That's great. I like seeing her in the finals of this episode. And, you know, remember, we don't have a model this time, so no one, no one gets to pick a painting to take home. Hmm, I kind of miss that part of the program. This one, which is both atmospheric and a little bit ghostly in a way. Uh, you know, I just, I'm, I just prefer Haiti Joe's because she just has a tendency to put a smile on my face. But this would only be um, something I would say if I was going to have to purchase one of these pieces of art. You know, it would come down to which one do I want to see all day. Wow, I'm surprised this is in the final. I don't get it. Why is this in the finals? Oh, man. They left that other one that was so dynamic. Darn it. Oh boy, judges, once again, I love you and you annoy me. The winner is, dun, 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 dun. Well, it's not gonna be Haiti Joe. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to show the, the landscape that he did in order to be on the program so we could have a reference point and then we're gonna look at his painting. And, you know, is it the best painting of the day? Hashtag Joe is always wrong. I don't know. I, but I do look forward to seeing more from him. He's an exciting painter. And he really had some challenges today. They all did, but he stepped up to it. And so good for you. All right. Remember to keep the whites, your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.